Population growth, especially from the second half of the 19th century, has led to an expansion of urban areas towards the outskirts of cities, as well as the approach of buildings to the surrounding natural environments. Those events have pressured flora and fauna to find new forms of subsistence, either by fleeing to remote natural places or by adapting to build areas. Awareness in sustainability and environmental protection is increasing in society. Those terms are gradually being included in an important range of activities, such as power generation, industry, mobility or civil works, among others. Nowadays, there's a clear distance between nature and people. That is why it is vitally important to be aware that we share the urban environment and that there are a great variety of biotopes with a lot of biodiversity. We must understand the city as an ecosystem and spread its environmental values. The concept of biodiversity refers to the presence of different living organisms, that is, species of flora and fauna that are found in a specific place. Biodiversity is one of the best indicators of an ecosystem's quality, thus being a global indicator of sustainability in cities and urban areas. Urban naturalization aims to boost the biodiversity of the structures of cities and must be a tool for urban green governance. In order to make it happen, strategies that give rise to naturalize cities are carried out, where the inhabitants coexist with biodiversity and can benefit from the services provided by the ecosystem, as well as the direct effects on their well-being and life quality. The environmental specialist, Dr. Marti Boada, defines the city as an urban structure composed of the grey system, made of buildings, walls, infrastructures, streets, squares, underground systems, the green system, made of plots of land, trees, green areas, parks and gardens, forest areas, rocks, and the blue system, made up of fountains, ponds, rivers, coastal areas, and ports. Contrary to what one might think, the grey system, such as buildings and other human constructions, can become a habitat where a great variety of species may coexist, adapt and take advantage of these spaces. The advantages of living in a urbanized environment are the reduction of potential predators, the access to human food, the availability of more adequate and safe structures to raise and nest, among others. In other words, the fauna of the city adapts to the architecture and urban structures, which end up being its habitat. That is why it is important that the citizens accept to share the space with fauna, avoid rehabilitation works in the nesting season, respect the wall holes where some birds nest, and adopt measures for the new buildings to be permissible for this biological wealth. Barcelona, for example, is a tree-lined city with inner concentric islands formed by different types of urban green spaces, delimited by the Coiserola Natural Park, the sea, and two lateral rivers, the Besos and the Llobregat. Surprisingly, most of the animals found in the city are wild fauna, and many of them have some degree of protection. Some animals that we can recognize easily in the city are, as for migratory birds, the barn swallow and the common house martin, the common swift and the alpine swift. These species feed on mosquitoes and pine processionary butterflies, thus controlling pests naturally. Other sedentary birds are also present, like the common kestrel, the peregrine falcon, the western jackdaw, the barn owl and the little owl, among others. Bats and hedgehogs are common among mammals. As for the reptiles, we may find dragons and Iberian wall lizards. Among the group of amphibians, we find the Mediterranean tree frog and the common midwife toad. The group of amphibians is one of the most threatened in the vast majority of ecosystems since they are very vulnerable to the transformation of the environment. In conclusion, biodiversity is a good indicator of the quality of life of a city, considered as an ecosystem. It is important to value and monitor urban biodiversity 
to know its status and promote its conservation. In order to promote the presence of fauna and flora, sustainability criteria should be carried out in the construction of buildings, and protection measures should be incorporated, since the biodiversity aspect in buildings is not considered yet, as it is done when plans, programs and projects are executed through environmental impact assessments.